Welcome back to La Huge Yanks. Bienvenue à La Huge Yanks. We're talking about Canada soccer and U.S. soccer. Tonight we're going to be talking about the U.S. women's national team's April roster. And they have two friendlies against Uzbekistan, one in April 9th in Columbus, Ohio. The other, April 12th in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or Chester, Pennsylvania. Homes of the um, Columbus crew and the Philadelphia Union, respectively. And tonight, I know it's a brief break. It's during uh, the men's thing, but I want to kind of shift to the women's as the roster literally for both Canada and the USA for their respective friendlies dropped today. And um, I'm going to go ahead and do it. So without further ado, here's who made the roster, who made the cut for the U.S. women's team. As it's been a while since we did a video on them, so we owe them one. So here's what the U.S. women's national team's April roster is made of. And once again, I'll post more details about uh, Uzbekistan's games or uh, games against Uzbekistan after I go over the lineup. But um, let's go ahead and run down who made the cut. For our goalkeepers, we have we have some new names here too, by the way, I forgot to mention. We have Bella Bixby. Sorry, once again, if I'm pronouncing these names wrong, as I always say and always disclaimer in these videos. So we have Bella Bixby as a goalkeeper, new name, and I'm really, really uh, excited to know more about her. Um, Aubrey Kingsbury, by the way, somebody, um, I'm surprised they, they still haven't uh, updated her uh, married, her married name. I believe somebody corrected me on that. So, um, yeah, waiting for the U.S. to update her last name. If they do, they're great, but if they don't, I would just keep saying Kingsbury. But if you are whoever you are who corrected me last time, please feel free to correct me again if I forgot. Um, Alyssa Nair, who we all know, too, who is the keeper who we see right here. And... Um, yeah, it looks like she might be the, uh, the one who plays both games. Um, although, um, Aubrey Kingsbury, um, she could play also play in these against both games against Uzbekistan. These are tune-up games, as I'll explain later on, for what's bigger down the road for this team. And then we go to our defenders. We have Alana Cook, who is on the screen here. Uh, Abby Dowkimber. Uh, Amari Dorsey, which I th Amani Dorsey, sorry. Um, which I think I've heard of her, and she might have played in the She Believes Cup. But if not, then we'll get to know more about her, hopefully, in this camp. Emily Fox, Naomi Germa, Sofia Huerta, Kelly O'Hara. And, um, yeah, so a few new names there. Um, for me, it's um, Imani Dorsey. I think she played in the Street Police Cup, but I didn't really get to see more of her. So um, really, really looking forward to doing that if she does. Uh, Naomi Germa, she sounds familiar. I think she was also played a couple minutes in the Street Police Cup. And Sophia Huerta, we, I saw her play. She looked well. She looked great. And we know Kelly O'Hara and Abby Dalkimber and Emily Fox, of course. But great opportunity. Is, remember, this is still part of their transition period for the U.S. women's team. As they've got a big, big 2022 ahead of them, as I'm going to run down. And, of course, it's already said later on after I break down these names. And then we go to our midfielders. We have Lindsey Huron. Uh, we have a new one, it looks like. Jalen Jalen Howell, which... Actually, I think she played uh, last in the She Believes Cup, but I didn't see her play. But if she did, I missed her. Uh, Roosevelt, Katarina Rocario, who had a big, big final game, I know for sure, uh, against um, the final team in the She Believes Cup. I believe it was New Zealand. Uh, but it was a big, big game against that. Um, Katarina Rocario, Christy Mewis, Samantha Mewis, Ashley Sanchez, and Andy Sullivan. A lot of new names here, a lot of or a lot of recognized names here. Um, great to see them back. You know, Roosevelt, this, the player who here who spotlight. Um, we all know she's right now the go-to midfielder for the U.S. women's team, and she she's, she keeps doing a great job. And I'm really really looking forward to her. She always creates something. She always does something great every time she gets the ball. Um, Katarina Corio, as I said, I think it was Iceland. My bad if I said New Zealand. Um, the Iceland game, the very, very last game that they played in the She Believes Cup where they won 5-0. And I'm pretty sure, 6-0, I'm pretty sure it was Iceland. And, um, yeah, Kana Ricario had a hat trick. All three of her goals were all beauties, including that one chip and even the one from the impossible angle. Beautiful, beautiful goal, and she's really growing, and I'm really, really glad. And keep in mind, she had a choice between Brazil and the USA. She chose the USA, and... Right now, it's, I mean, it's a darn good choice. She's just adding to the talent here, and really, she's an exciting player to watch. Ashley Sanchez as well is also exciting. Andy Sullivan is also exciting. 
all these players that are exciting as we I'm very familiar with Lindsay and Ryan, Lavelle and Macario, Mewis. Uh, both the Mewis sisters, of course, are always great. And when they play together, normally don't play together, normally one plays for the other and they come off the bench. But both of them are good. You can't go wrong with any of them. Uh, but the one player I really, really want to know more about is Jalen Howe. And I think she got minutes, but I really need to pay more close attention to her. I'll be paying close attention to her now um, in her friendlies coming up. And I really, really look forward to see what she can produce in here. And then finally, we go to our forwards. We have Ashley Hatch, which we know. Uh, she, I first uh, got to know her with our Australia's games. And she scored in both of those friendlies back in December. And... Yeah, she was really, really, she's really young, and she's one of the rising transitional talents that are coming in here. I believe she's going to have a breakout season with the U.S. women's team, and I'm really, really excited to see what she can produce as well. Mallory Pugh, who is shown here as Pugh, or Mitch, I know for her, um, or not Mitch, but Mitch Purse is the next person on here as well. But Mallory Pugh, another, once again, another great player. She always, she, you, always, you can always count on her. She always gives you and provides something special when she gets on the ball. Um, as I said, Mitch Purse always, um, as, well here they have Margaret, but I believe she prefers Mitch. Um, but great players, great, excited to see what they can do in these upcoming friendlies. And then Trinity Rodman, who is a, one of the other players that I know for a fact she got some minutes and saw her actually get some minutes in the She Belize Cup. She looked really well and she is definitely one of the rising players. I think when she first came, she got a standing ovation. And so, I'm, I'm really, really excited, just like everyone else is excited to see what she can also produce as well. And then last, but definitely not least, Sophia Smith, who is who is phenomenal every time she gets on the ball. She is just in and out. She always has skill moves, and she's very electric. And really, really excited to see what she can do once she gets on the ball. And um, you can always count on her to do something special as well. Sophia Smith is the electric. She's just that electric player. And I believe that, you know, even the U.S. men's team, too, they just have that electric player, or even the Canadian uh, wins and women's team, too. They just have that electric player that just fun to watch, that fun, that nifty, skillful player. And it's just, I believe every team needs that, and it's always fun. And really, really can't wait. And now you know for a fact she's going to play in both of these friendlies against Uzbekistan. By the way, speaking of Uzbekistan, here are the friendlies that I mentioned that you can catch on TV. Um... Here's where they are, April 9th, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, or Daylight Time, I should say, or just Eastern Time in general with Lower.com Field in Columbus, Ohio, home of the Columbus Crew of MLS. You can watch that on Fox, Univision Networks, so you can watch it in English or Spanish, depending on your language preference. And then they play again and turn around April 12th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, this time at Subaru Park, home of the Philadelphia Union of MLS in Chester, Pennsylvania, so on the outskirts of Philadelphia. And you can catch this one instead on ESPN2, but you can still catch it in Spanish if you speak Spanish or prefer to hear it in Spanish on Univision TV networks. So those are your roster uh, players, and those are your um, friendly games. And then I just want to um, break it down with one reminder here. Uh, big year coming up for the U.S. women's team, and really, really excited to see what they can produce in this whole year. As we remember, as I said in previous videos, they've got a uh, CONCACAF championship coming up, which dictates, I believe, um, qualifiers for a Gold Cup next year. Um, I believe it also dictates Olympic and World Cup spots coming up. So, um, big, big year coming up for them. I know there's a lot of competition spots on the line here, and for sure the World Cup for next year. And as Canada and the USA will be favorites, as well as even Mexico, who is quickly rising, I know for sure, on their talent. And good for CONCACAF for women's, as we just need, you know, once again, make make these teams better. Costa Rica, Mexico, Panama, if you can. You know, just more teams that can challenge the USA and Canada. As, you know, I mean, USA and Canada is great that they're dominating, but sometimes it gets, it gets a little boring, you know, kind of being right. It's always good to have that third or fourth element surprise, Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, whoever it's going to be. Um, even Jamaica, you know, it's always good to have those teams. And how, how did I forget about Jamaica? They're, they're always good, too. Can't forget about Jamaica and the reggae girls. Um, really just really can't wait to see those teams get good. When they do, they will soon time. Um, but it's other ways, it's a big, big year for both Canada and USA. Can't USA trying to go back to the World Cup 
and winning as they are the defending champions from 2019 in France. And they're going to be trying to hold on to their throne here. But Canada is also trying to challenge. Um, just big year for both of them. And really, really, once again, these are tune-up games, as I said earlier on. As I believe, maybe, th I think festivities, and not festivities, but big games start in the summer, I believe. If not the summer, then definitely the fall. As But their focus starts now. And keep in mind, as I said many, many times already, the U.S. Women's National Team is in this transitional period. They're changing from old to new. Young, I mean, old to young, as too, as well. They're going from more young, experienced, energetic players, as you know, the passing of the torch. We saw the retirement of Carly Lloyd and knocking on the door of retirement. Rumors has it that Megan Rapino will also be on her way out very, very soon, although she hasn't confirmed it yet. So she very well could still be caught up should the U.S. women's qualify, as I hope they do. But um, even then, she doesn't, I don't think she has much time left on this team which is why the USA is trying to go ahead and usher in a new generation of talent for this U.S. women's team, which can't always go wrong with that. And really, really excited to see from the friendlies I've seen so far and the She Believes Cup, they're heading in the right direction, but we've got to make sure they can keep doing so and that there's no drop-off and they can, and even the bench talent can provide the same amount as we hope that their talent just keeps rising. So, um... Yeah, big year coming up. Tune-up games continue. I'm pretty sure they're going to have a few in May as well. Um, if not May, definitely June. But we just got to keep an eye on that, and I'll keep making a video on that. But that pretty much does it for this. Next up, I'll have a Canada women's roster. As they're going to have um, their continuing their victory celebration tour, their gold medal matches. And this time, is all games are being played on the West Coast. Victoria and Vancouver. And um, they're playing Nigeria. So... I would do that and stay tuned for that for the next video if you watch it for Canada. But for the U.S., that pretty much does it. If you like this video, make sure you like, share, subscribe. Tell all your friends about it. Also, before you go, hit the bell notification. That way you know when a new video is uploaded or posted. And tell all your friends about it. And also tell all your friends. The USA is still trying to work on their tune-up game for the women's as they have a big, big 2022 coming up this year.